a new day dawns. With the winners of old, hoping experience leads to further success. I always have a plan. I'm just ready with my game to go against everybody. Me gusta jugar, me gusta batirme contra los demás, me gusta ganar. You're on this path to try and win the tournament. You want to be the number one. But there are new challenges, fresh foes on the horizon. And before anyone can think about victory, they need to survive the day. Stavitz takes the win here in Barcelona. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. Yeah. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Come on! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrin has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Welcome to Monaco. We're back on the Riviera for the PokerStars EPT, presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Last time in the main event, it was bubble day. As some players fell, others triumphed. Oh. Yes, come on, baby. Yes. And once we were into the money, Hungarian pro Ferenc Diak dominated the action. Decent cards you have today, sir. Ah, uh, don't start it. <laughs> Quads. Straight. Wow. Aces. Again. People don't believe me, yes. Hello once again, I'm James Hartigan. He's Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And this is day three of the main event. With more than 90% of the field gone, we are well into the money now. 85 players are still in contention for the trophy and top prize, including three former EPT champions. Yeah, and one of those former champs will be seated right here on the main stage alongside Ola Shemian, an eternally youthful bon vivant with an impressive track record here in Monaco and hair as pink as a Monegasque sunset. Yes, Ola Shemian reinvents himself every few years with a new look and extra swagger. But one thing stays consistent, his talent at the tables. Here in Monaco, he has made two main event final tables, won a super high roller, and has cashed for more than five million euros. Suffice to say, he's a force to be reckoned with. Well, we're welcoming players back into the Salle des Etoiles for day three of this 5K main event. There's one of the big stacks, Ferenc Diak. This guy bossed it so hard at the feature yesterday, we're looking at Peak Diak, or Piak Diak. Sophia Lovgren started well yesterday, but is now playing a below average stack. Is pink the color of the day because I did not get the memo? Team pro Ramon Kalios is becoming familiar with making deep runs in big buy-in tournaments. Former personal trainer, deep runs and deep knee bends. Hi, Mom. <laughs> see you at the final table. Oh, I was also planning to see your mom at the final table. And there is chip leader Neil Farrell looking for his second EPT title. Later tonight, he'll be looking for his third beer. Well, if we look at the leaderboard, it is pretty tight at the top. Neil Farrell starts the day with 195 big blinds. Ferenc Diak and Ola Shemian also have seven-figure stacks. Ramon Kalia sits in seventh place with 132 big blinds. Well, Ola Shemian will wield his big stack up on the main stage, where he's joined by former EPT champ Arno Matern, Gail Bauman, and online crusher Yussi Nevenlina. Time to get day three of the main event underway. Blind to 3,000, 6,000 with a 6K big blind ante. And action at the feature table will be on Arno Matern. More like our yes, Matern. He's folded. Yannick Cardo also passes. Flavio Millet is out. Jose Nevenlina and Gail Bauman have both passed. Morten Vam, a banker from Denmark, 
Raises the button with King Queen of Hearts. Fun hand on the button. Even if you get three bat by one of the blinds, you can still see a flop in position. Well, it's Olashemian in the big blind. A6 of diamonds. You can three bet this against button raise, but it also plays all right post flop. He defends. And we will see our first flop of the day. Oh, wow. Vam flops the nuts. Havam ha flops it. And Shemian could get in trouble here, Joe, with top pair. Yeah, even though there's plenty of hands that would fold to a C bet, I do think betting here is fine. There's plenty that can give you action. And I think Shemian will give him action. Yeah, think of all the hands that would have caught a piece or a draw. No, no, really think of it. You're not doing it. Calls the 16K. And we go to the turn. Six of hearts. Oh, wow. Shemian likes to get in even more trouble now with two pair. Yeah, I thought all I was absolutely calling at least one street, but he might be calling all three now. He's checked a second time. Morton Vam is betting a second time. Are we sure his name is HVAM and not HVAC? Because this is a cooler. 42,000. And much like the job title of influencer, Olashemian is going nowhere. You'll notice now we've made day three, the shot clock is in play. Everyone has 30 seconds per decision. Shemian calls and we go to the river. Not much that will save him. Yeah, that won't. Checks a third time. How much value will Morton Vam try to extract here? There's 151,000 in the middle. Well, he's going to have to figure out just how strong he thinks Ola is. And Ola's pretty strong. Looks like he's going big. 133,000 snap cold. Didn't even bother seeing how much, just knew he was going to call. Watch. You know, even though he lost the hand, I'm still going to rate this six bags of swag. Big pot to start day three. Morton Vam up to 742,000. Well, Shemian dropping down to 809,000. Still a very healthy stack. News from the floor, former EPT champion Lucian Cohen has been KO'd. And we're actually heading to the outer tables right now because Sophia Lovegren is all in. Golly, golly. And she is behind. She's run jacks into Fabian Motta's aces. Not looking good for Sophia. She's down to two outs. She hits! Pink power blazer working for Sophia, but when I do it, it's all, sir, you have to wear an undershirt if you're going to try that on. Aces cracked. And a double up for Sophia Lovegren. That's got to hurt. Hurt a lot. She's now playing 489,000. She's now an above average stack. And we are staying out in the field. It is Ramon Calias versus Julian Martini, two players with a lot of history. Look at this little reunion. Wouldn't it be wild if they ended up heads up again? That would be so crazy. Ramon has checked the flop. Martini bets 21,000. Ramon in the big blind. Has a bit more of an uncapped range. He calls. Deuce of diamonds on the turn. And Kalias checks a second time. Martini betting again by the looks of things. He ain't scared. 45,000 into 87,000. And a fold from Kalias. 
Yeah, that ought to make up for the two and a half million dollar heads up. Junior Martini now playing 297,000. Ramon has dropped down to 767,000. Well, we're heading back to the feature table where the action is on Gail Bauman. She faults. Morton Pham is out. Leonard Herman is not going to play this one. Shemian passes. King Jack of Diamonds for Arno Matern, and he is all in for 77k. Arno, his turn to move all in. Good luck. Thank you. Yannick Cardo is a Platinum Pass winner. He'll be going to the PSPC in 2023. Well, he has got an awkward stack size here. All in. He reshoves for 222,000. Folds from the blinds, and Arno Matan finds himself at risk, but not too far behind. Live cards, live suit, not too bad. The flop. Good card. Has two diamonds on it. Just for TV. <laughs> Arno is now a statistical favorite. Good board. He still has 13 outs. <laughs> but he misses. Nice one. Good luck, guys. Good luck, everybody. Cardo hits his O card. Adds 92K to his stack. And Arno Matern, the inaugural EPT Prague champion, is out in 76th place. Arno Matern racing out of here like he's in the Monaco Grand Prix. And that's another former EPT winner departing early. Welcome back to the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Not a great start to day three for the established pros. Before the break, former Prague champion Arno Matern was KO'd from the main event. While Olashemian is still reeling from losing a significant pot and dropping below the 1 million mark. How's that? Back inside the Sal Desertoire. Blinds are up to 4,000, 8,000 with an 8K big blind ante. And in this hand, we're going to sweat with Ola Shemian. We'll play it from his perspective and only see his whole cards. I would love to sweat with Ola Shemian's big blind ante. That came out wrong. Well, he's in the cutoff here and is raising to 16,000 with Jack 4 suited. Not a hand I would raise with, but okay. Filmmaker Dan Kizu has called. This is Flavien Moulet, a French player who's locked up his first ever EPT cash in this event. It's kind of disappointing for a guy named Mullet. He's got business in the front and business in the back. Moulet calls as well out of the big blind, and we are going three-way to the flop. Nine eight five with two hearts. That's a flush draw for Shemian. Feel like plenty of folks would. Nope. I guess checking's the right play if it's Ola Shemian doing it. If I were Ola Shemian, I'd be like, I'm Ola Shemian. I'm gonna get there. Pot, and then I would pot it, and then they'd be like, you can't pot it in this game. It would be a whole thing. Dan Kizu checks behind. Free turn card which is the Ace of Diamonds. Maybe if I say something really nice about Dan Kizu, it'll put me in one of his movies. I've never been in anything that's gone direct to Laserdisc. Action checked to Shemian. This really doesn't feel like a time for a bet. Well, he makes a delayed C bet of 40,000, gets a fold from Kizu. Action back on Moulet. Who is check raising to 100,000? So I don't know why you guys keep doing this to me and making us sweat with really good players, but I think maybe I had this one right. Maybe we shouldn't have bet. Or maybe Ola Shemian's such a genius, he knows the heart is coming and he tricked Moulin into semi-bluffing for him. Either way, with the flush draw at this point, I think we probably have to call. 
Shemian does call. Looking for a heart on the river. But it's the six of diamonds, leaving Shemian with just jack high. And I don't think that's likely to be the best hand. No. The only way we can win this pot now is to absolutely drill it. Well, no bet from Ulay. He's checked to Shemian. Yeah, so what do I care? It's not my money. Let's go. 260,000 in the middle. And here comes the bluff from Ola Shemian. Probably his plan all along. 182,000. This is a huge bet. There are a lot of very good hands we could get to fold, especially if it's an easily intimidated player. Look at that. Ole thinking about it. And calls. Good call. Moulet had ace nine for two pair. Wow, almost folded two pair. Nobody intimidates the mullet. The mullet intimidates you. He has moved over the one million mark. Ola Shemian has dropped down to 655,000. Having an off day today, just not clicking. Well, a huge pot to tell you about from one of the outer tables. It was the sickest and classicest of all races. Ace King for Marcelo Samoas, winning a flip against the pocket queens of Julien Vessier. He finishes in 67th place, cashing for nearly 14K. Julien Vessier. And Marcelo Samoas is up to 1.65 million. That's three times the average stack. Well, we're going to stay out in the field because there's been another elimination. Say goodbye to Oliver Bosch, out in 65th. He was KO'd by Italy's Fausto Tantillo, who is the biggest stack in the room right now. He has almost 1.7 million, so he's 40k ahead of Samoas. Ferenc Diak, Neil Farrell, and Flavian Moulet are the other players above 1 million right now. Ramon Kalida sits in 10th with just over 800K. Let's get straight back to the action at the feature table because Gail Bauman is all in and at risk against Morton Vam. King nine for Bauman, ace king for Vam. Domination on deck. 10 on the turn. Wow, good turn. That's better one. Seven cards Gail Bauman can hit to survive. That isn't one of them. Gail Bauman is KO'd. Havam, Havamanos. She exits in 60th place. And Morton Vam is now closing in on the 800K mark. No, I will not eat green eggs in Havam. Well, this is exciting, Joe. There is a three-way all-in on one of the outer tables. Pocket nines for Terja Bremseth. Queens for Jaime Cervantes. Ace king for Sophia Lovegren, who has the other players covered. Well, this is a mess. Big, big, big. Set over set. Jeez. Sophia can still win with a gut shot. Yeah, she's looking for a 10. Bremseth needs quads. This pot's going to Cervantes. <laughs> Sophia's not out. It's Bremseth who's eliminated. Cool hand for Cervantes. Quixotic. Seriously, read a book. Sophia Lovegren back down to 200K. Jaime Cervantes up to 645K. back to the main stage. Well, we've been joined by Daniel Golder. Not gonna play this hand. So action is on Ola Shemin, who's got sixes under the gun, plus one. Desperately trying to make something happen today. He's raised to 16,000. Ace eight for Dan Kizu. Not a huge fan of calling in this spot. 
Yeah, he lets it go. Good. Mule is out. So it's Yussi Nevenlina on the button with Jack-10 of spades. Never have I Evanlina called with Jack-10 suited on the button. He is an online beast. Calls in position. And now we've got Morton Vam in the big blind with 10-4 offsuit. He calls as well. Woof. Three-way to the flop. Okay, well, it's second pair for Vam, a flush draw for Nevenlina, but Shemian is still ahead right now with sixes. And he bets 14,000. Well, it's tough to get Jack-10 of spades to fold with the flush draw and backdoor straight outs, too. Nevenlina is in. Oh, don't forget two live cards. And Vam is in, still three-way as we go to the turn. We are family. And Vam improves to two pair and is now almost a two-to-one favorite. This is really not Ola Shemian's day. He's going to lead. I actually kind of like a lead with these two pair. 47,000. Shemian folds. Nevenlina now has a pair to go with his flush draw. And he calls. A river card is the five of spades. That's the flush for Nevenlina. We're off to Neven Nevenland. Uh-oh. Van bets, but pretty small, 36,000. This is blocker bet sizing. Usually all you're trying to do is not get raised. I think he's going to get raised. I think so, too. You'll see Nevenlina makes it 145,000. And there are a lot of hands that have 10-4 beat here. Not all of them could raise this river, but there's straights and flushes and maybe even some sets. Morton Vam calls. Havam, Havamit. Nevenlina tables the winning hand and is now up to 1.28 million. I said he's an online beast. He plays as Calvin 7V. He has 13 online championship titles to his name. You see Nevin Lena, AKA Calvin. Bossing it online and live. Well, if you'd like to test your skills against the best players in the world, find out how you can join us on tour by heading over to PokerStars. Time to change the feature table at the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. And it's a PSPC reunion as we bring Ramon Kalilas and Julian Martini to the main stage. Compartir mesa con Julian Martini siempre siempre es un placer. Siempre hace gracia volverlo a ver y, y nada, es divertido y nos llevamos muy bien, es, es muy buen chico. I crossed Ramon a few times during EPT uh, uh, events and uh, it reminds me happiness because even if I didn't win it, I finished second, so it was a great moment for me. So Ramon is in seat three with a stack of 857,000. Julien is in seat five with just 189,000. That's fewer than 20 big blinds. The big stack at the table is Fausto Tantilo in seat seven. In fact, he is still tournament chip leader, playing more than 1.8 million. And right now, the blinds are 5,000, 10,000 with a 10K big blind ante. Julian and Ramon again. Man, they really are rebooting everything. And action is going to start here with Julian Martini under the gun plus one, raising with pocket queens, makes it 20K. You know, Julian doesn't have a huge stack. If these queens get bad beat, we may not get the showdown we're hoping for. Folded around to Nikolai Tulin. Nothing to say about the bucket hat, Joe? 
I'm waiting to see if I like him or not. He faults. David Lopez passes. Looks like it's round to Ramon, who's got Ace King strap in for the sickest and classicest of races. I spoke too soon. Okay. I'm 170 behind. Ramon likely to re raise. And Julian likely to enjoy that. A three bet to 62,000. And expect Martini to go with this. He shoves. And Ramon calls. Classic. Good luck to you. Ramon was right. He is a good guy. And Martini is the at risk player here. Slight favorite. 54 46. But it's a king high flop, so Ramon takes the lead. Martini now needs a queen and needs to hit on the river. Just two outs. He's like, I can't believe this is happening again. The river card is another king. Good luck, everybody. Good game. Julian Martini eliminated in 54th place, cashing for nearly 16 and a half thousand euros. Kind of like every sequel ever. A lot of hype and didn't quite live up to the original. Yeah, not quite the reunion we'd hoped for. But same result. Ramon KOs Julian Martini. Just as he did at the final table of the biggest 25K in poker history. Sigo siendo, creo, el Ramón Collar de siempre, la misma esencia, la misma persona. Simplemente que quizás donde más me ha cambiado ha sido a nivel profesional, jugar a póker, jugar los circuitos más importantes del mundo. Yo siempre he sido un chico bastante introvertido, muy privado de, de, mi, de mi vida privada. Y a veces sí que me siento un poco más observado por haber ganado ese torneo, pero bueno, es una cosa que también te gusta, ¿no? Me encantaría, aparte de tener el PSPC, tener el, el de campeón del EPT. Al final, el PSPC es el mejor torneo del mundo, pero el EPT hace muchísimos años que se está jugando, tiene muchísimo prestigio y me gustaría mucho ganarlo y tenerlo en casa. Para mí sería un orgullo. He'd love to win the trophy and put it in his house that he bought with the money that he got with the trophy. Well, out in the field, we're potentially looking at another three-way all-in. Move said all-in really fast. Why? Decision is with Lucas Svez. Almost the same. 180. Alejandro Romero and Sofia Lovgren are the all-in players. Svez thinking. My guess is he's folding. Yes, sorry. No, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> A lot of things to do. I know, I know, I know. He does fold. It's a showdown between Lovegren and Romero. Rare anyone says this, but Sophia is not looking good. She is at risk and behind. Looking for an eight. One last chance to hit. No. Why would you want to remember this? For taxes. What do you have? Nice one. Sophia Lovegren exits in 53rd place, 16,440 euros. I wonder if she's going to have to give Ola Shemian back his pink blazer. The chips go to Alejandro Romero, who's now playing 463k. Well, Flavio Moulet was at our feature table earlier. He now finds himself all in with Ace Jack against Neil Farrell's Queens. 
An ace and a jack on the flop. Mullet hits the party in the front. Farrell gonna need to catch some business in the back and does not. 360 Doesn't look like it hurt Neil too bad, other than, you know, in here. Flavio Moulet now an above average stack, 782,000. And talking of players from our previous feature table, Ola Shemian is coming back to the main stage. Okay, so it's not just me, he was just here. He looks like the world's handsomest carny. Dealer has asked for his player's card. Everyone knows him. Ole Shemian. So to buy a big fan. Now Ola knows who he's going to get to do all his extra carny work. Blind still 5,000 to 10,000. Action will start with Nikolai Tulin. He's under the gun. And he faults. Shemian in early position has pocket aces. This has been a weird day for Ola. I sure hope these aces work out, and I hope this isn't some weird foreshadowing. Well, he's raised to 21,000. Mark Cristiani is on the button with Jack-10. He calls. He's in position, but I think Jack-10 off might be a fold on the button. Zhang Chen in the small blind. Folds. And chip leader Fausto Tantillo has queen six of hearts in the big. Seeing a flop with suited paint is all the rage these days. Tantillo sounds like a delicious hot sauce. I'll have the number six with extra Tantillo. He calls as well, three way to the flop. Okay, so top pair for Cristiani, bottom pair for Tantillo, Shemian still ahead with aces. It's a pretty safe flop for aces. Action's been checked to Cristiani on the button and he's loading up. This is exactly what Ola wants. A bet of 36,000. The chip leader folds. Shemian's going nowhere. Shemian may be thinking about raising, but probably thinking about keeping a 10 in there. Calls, and we go heads up to the turn. Which is a jack that's two pair for Cristiani, and he is now an 83% favorite. That is bad for Ola. You don't say. Second bet coming. What do we think, like 50% De Niro, 50% Duvall? Cristiani makes it 65,000. Ola can't really be loving this. Also can't really be folding aces yet. Calls the bet and we go to the river. Which is a nine. Very straighty board now. Yeah, this board gets worse for both of them. Check, check. Aces. That is going to be frustrating for anyone who has any human feelings left at all about this game. Ola Shemian loses yet another big pot. This table, man. <laughs> okay, I'm not happy that happened, but I am happy one of the best in the game can still have the irrational thought that it's the table. No suited or no suited? Aces suited. Aces? No. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> and they still laugh at suited aces jokes. <sighs> Here at the PokerStars European Poker Tour, presented by Monte Carlo Casino, things really haven't been going Ola Shemian's way. This table, man. <laughs> From a top three stack to less than half average, Shemian's going to need to draw on some of that Monaco run good if he hopes to survive. So blinds are still 5,000, 10,000 with a 10K big blind ante and action at the feature table is on Zhang Chen. He faults. 
Tantillo is out. Tulin has passed, as has Shemian. Shingiz Satubayev. Let's it go. It's a round to Ramon Kalias on the button, who raises with Jax, makes it 20k. Pocket hacks. 75. 75. And this is interesting. Artur Conan in the small blind is three betting with Jack Eight of Diamonds. It makes sense if you think Ramon's going to be raising any two cards from the button, except when he doesn't fold to this raise, the rest of the time you're playing a bloated pot out of position. Ramon calls in position, and we go to the flop. Well, Conan has paired his eight, but Kalilas is a huge favorite here. I have not seen an Arthur Conan in this bad a shape since I used Hounds of Baskerville as a doorstop back in college. Well, Conan has four EPT caches to his name, plus he won a 50K in Florida not that long ago. 42. He continues here for 42,000. Ramon Kalias, no stranger to dream scenarios, and here is another one. Is this a call or a raise spot? I'm going to let Ramon answer that. It's a raise, 100K total. Yeah, it's almost just a click back. This has got to be so tempting. When does Ramon have a seven? And if he did, why would he raise? Turns out you're losing to more things than just a seven, though. Artur Conan makes the call, and we go to the turn. Conan's stack to pot ratio is starting to get a little dicey. Six of hearts, so Ramon picks up a flush draw to go with his overpair. Pretty decent flush draw. Conan checks. And with that overpair and the big heart, we could easily see another bet from Ramon. It's another 100,000. Now, as James mentioned, Arthur Conan is a very accomplished player in his own right. But it looks like he could be walking directly into a Swiss crevasse. He calls. This hand going to the river, and now Conan does not have a pot size bet left. It's the three of hearts, Ramon with a jack high flush. <laughs> Conan must have had a plan for if he didn't improve. Looks like he's betting. More than half his chips, 230,000. I'm not going to lie. From this perspective, this looks crazy. But it's such a wild bluff that it looks like he's actually got Ramon thinking about it. His shot clock is running. And Ramon is playing a time bank card. He's buying an additional 30 seconds of thinking time. And I guess, Joe, he has to worry about a bigger heart or some full house combos. Yeah, honestly, I thought this was a punt, but clearly Conan has taken a very credible line here. Successful or no, congrats on the game being afoot. Unless he's value betting an eight, then this is probably terrible. Ramon is running out of time. His clock is ticking down. He's going to have to play another time bank card. This might work. It doesn't work. He makes the call. What the spot? And Ramon Kalias will add more than half a million to his stack. I wonder how close he was to actually folding. Easy to say that PSPC was a fluke. 
But Ramon Calias really does have some chops. And he is now playing a stack of 1.77 million. While out in the field, Lucas Svez has been eliminated to the disappointment of his dad, Eric. Svez knocked out by Havam. That's severely vexing. Bam, up over two million now. And Svez cashing out for nearly 16 and a half K. And at least his dad isn't going to leave him waiting outside school all day. To, I mean, outside the tournament area all day to get picked up. Well, across the room, it's Nikola Greco versus Jason Wheeler. We join the hand on the river. Please tell me Wheeler has ace five. Well, he's betting 155,000. I've never seen Greco take this long to act before. He calls. And Wheeler tables trips. That seemed a little loaded. Maybe these two have history. Greco tabling kings. 155. 155. Bravo. Bravo. That sounded genuine enough. Jason Wheeler up to 810,000. Rico down to 439k. The river king, but the river no king. Be happy at that 155. If I know you have kings, I go 255. Be happy, you save 100. It's a good day for you. Cut. All right, everybody needs to start getting used to being around people again, I think. 18 years I've been here. 18 years. You, you're not the one, my friend. Is that a Matrix quote? What is happening? Checking in now on Ferenc Diak, who's in action against Ana Marquez. Side note, Javier Zapatero was forced all in from the small blind pre-flop. And with Ana folding, it will be showdown with Zapatero at risk. Maybe Diak did him a favor. Jack 10 versus 8-4. So Jack High currently ahead. Wow. Zapatero now with 14 outs. But that isn't one of them, and Jack High is still the best hand. Javier Zapatero is eliminated. Missed them all. That'll take us down to 41 players in the main event. Rents Diak hovering around the 2 million mark right now. As we head back to the feature table. Action will be on Arta Conan. He faults. Mark Cristiani has jacks. Welcome to Monte Carlo, or as I like to call it, New Jack City. Raises from the hijack to 25,000. Xiong Chen. Ace three in the cutoff. Yeah. I said, yeah. Finally gets the message. Folded to Shemian in the small blind. Pocket sixes. On him. And he shoves. Back on Cristiani. I call. He calls, putting Ola Shemian at risk. Ola seemed a bit pain today, and this could be him finally put out of his misery. It is a domination situation. An eight tray deuce flop. Shemian still in need of a six. One last chance. Two outs for Ola Shemian. The river is a nine. He's out. Good game. Good game, Ole. So as this session draws to a close, Ola Shemian exits in 41st place. Yo. Now it's back to a shift at Willy Wonka's Cotton Candy Gas Station. 
Shemian cashing for nearly 16 and a half K. So 40 players remain in the main event midway through day three. Fausto Tantillo still chip leader with more than 2.2 million. The other big stacks belong to Morton Vam, Ferenc Diak, and Ramon Kalilas, who's playing 140 big blinds. Next time, players find out what it takes to beat... Ramon. <laughs> it's great, you. You have left me. <laughs> yes. You need a lot of luck. I need to find the vlogger. <laughs>